What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. We got another game from Jazz Latte today. If you guys didn't catch the last video, he is rank one Taiwan. I've VOD reviewed him in the past. He's just, he's one of those players who's just at the top of other regions plays. You know, I, I usually focus on NA. In the past, I was the, the Chinese VOD review guy, though. Like I said, that's becoming more and more difficult lately. I'll, I'll try to get some at some point. But Jazz Latte luckily streams on Twitch, so it's super easy to watch. This is Golden Golden Journey. I, isn't this exactly the, the same? I, I mean, I think this is the all gold portal that we saw from last video, but for a second I was like, am I am I VOD reviewing the same game that we just reviewed? Also, we got an Exalted check here. This is kind of a weird one. Uh, it's the one where you have Thresh and Lux. That's like the biggest um, combination here, so you can easily play like a Lux plus Thresh plus Annie setup with like an Ash board. Uh, Kaisa, a little bit harder to fit, but you know, there's some word where you can do like Kaisa, Annie, Diana, Kaisa, Annie, and, and friends. Easiest to just fit with um, kind of like an Ash uh faded and thrown in any type board but uh we'll, we'll see what uh mr jazz latte wants to do this game gets the early thresh pair which makes me want to play around a faded opener for sure so hold on to the darius uh he's gonna hold on to the behemoth uh which seems pretty reasonable can pick up the rexai as well rexai a very very strong unit in the early game and also we have ap items right here we could angle this into that new faded um dryad comp uh potentially and so holding on to the dryad if we get dropped uh, a kindred we could potentially get there this item drop here is actually a little bit awkward immediately the glove rod chain start i kind of hate it set fast heart like the only i mean crown guard is the good slam but the problem with crown guard slam is then you're left with glove open so you'd have to go crown guard into something ad which is really awkward um and augments as well it's going to be epic boiling point both kind of awkward forcing you to either play around mythics or porcelain um so uh, yeah i don't really love either of those to start but i yeah i don't love keepers either Perhaps we're just gonna we're just gonna say take boiling point at this point. This is a really scary start from uh, from Jazz Latte. I would probably roll this, but then like you're you're left with either having to take the Sedge of Night augmented force like some kind of um, some kind of AD type game. You could take this and make a Crown Guard and, and maybe play into. I mean, I'm not even really sure. Or you could do something else. Long. Oh my God, long shot. So we have to lock ourselves into something. I mean, this is certainly the most flexible augment, the uh, the Edge of Night one. Not today, um, but it's still not that that flexible. But it lets you at least flex a few things. I guess my favorite line from this spot would probably be not today into like a duelist game. The problem is where the duelist at. But we could go like Edge of Night Crown Guard. Uh, the Crown Guard could go onto like a Volley Bear later. It's just I'm not that confident. But we need to get to a Volley Bear to, to be able to put the Crown Guard onto Volley Bear. So he is going to go for the Edge of Night. Uh, looking at the Crown Guard Slam, but not going to make it yet because he doesn't really want to commit his items, uh, especially with a board that this week, that is this week. It's not like uh, slamming Crown Guard is going to do a ton here. Maybe we kill an extra unit. That's something really important in TFT is don't slam items when uh, you don't need to, when, when it doesn't actually make sense here. What's the difference between slamming and not slamming here? There's, there's really no difference. Um, so the upside is we get to keep the flexibility of not slamming, but we don't... Uh, you know, there's there's no reason to slam. If you slam there and, and you kill one extra unit, I mean, maybe. But uh, I'm not in this spot that confident that we want to play around the, the crown guard yet. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, this is a board, actually, that's pretty weak. Uh, they're all one stars, and we do have the Darius 2 at the edge of night. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's Darius is just kind of a monster against this board because they just don't have any way of killing him. Uh, this could be a make gold, but then we'd lose the fresh, and it would be really, really nice to be able to play around a faded opener here. Speaking of which, we get the Ari. Still no uh, actual faded unit to play around yet, so we're just going to opt to play the Alune on this board. Yeah, I like this a lot, though. Are we going to make this round? Uh, he's thinking about selling off the Thresh this round, and yeah, it looks like he is just going to make 10 here, and ooh, this is a cool callout from Jess Latte here. He's going to hold on to these Heavenly units, and it looks like he's saying... It's 2-3, I cannot afford to not make 10 gold here, and I have to commit to one of the openers. I'm actually going to commit to playing around Heavenly this game instead of playing around Faded, because Faded opener doesn't really make sense with the Edge of Night augment. It makes a lot more sense to play around Heavenly, so he's going to hold on to those Heavenly units, make 10, and uh, I mean, yeah, I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, we have the Glove open. I would think this would, if we're playing towards Heavenly, be towards the Last Whisper, but now we can't get that, so we're just going to take a Sword for the second Edge of Night. Um... Either second edge of night or, I mean, I guess it could be an IE. I'd have to imagine the sword's going to end up being the second edge of night, but we'll see. And yep, there's the Kiana, who's a fantastic addition on this board. Um, gets the duelist in for us and could be heavenly. Uh, I mean, could be heavenly right now, just over something like the Thresh. I'm curious to see. Looks like he doesn't want to fit heavenly on this board over something like Thresh. I don't know if that's an oversight or if he really thinks... Uh, Heavenly is weaker just because it doesn't buff up our board that much, buffs uh, you know the other units a little bit, and like Kiana is really the one who gets a big buff from this. But yeah, maybe he thinks Thresh is just a good enough unit. 
I don't know, it could, could certainly be an oversight here, and I feel like you would have to play the Malphite now, yeah, because this allows you to make 20 gold, which is a big, big thing, so yeah, maybe maybe just an oversight from Chaz Latte, or maybe he really wanted to, uh, maybe he really thought the Thresh is a good enough unit that it's worth not playing Heavenly, I wouldn't think so, but maybe, maybe. But yeah, we got this double-edged knight with a Heavenly opener slammed. I think this is going to be a fun game because this is post-changes uh, to Heavenly, uh, where nowadays Heavenly buffs the Heavenly units more. It works like Guild worked in the past, where, you know, you really want to be playing around a Heavenly carry or get some kind of Heavenly uh, augment, like uh, a Heavenly emblem from an augment. Then you can throw that onto either your Kane or your Lee Sin, and then you're really, really happy. Normally, uh, that is the setup where you throw the Heavenly emblem onto, uh, onto Lee Sin, that's what I've heard, at least, is the, the consensus among uh, um, among gamers. Uh, we do get a Tristana here, so like I was talking about, about maybe playing a Duelist game, I don't think it's impossible from this spot. Double Edge of Night certainly works. Ooh, and there's a Thresh, too, so we can just put that in right over the uh, the Cho'Gath, and our front line's kind of sorted for now. The only issue is, how the heck are we going to end up playing around this? Uh, Reforge the Rod here I like, because it's just a pretty low-impact item in either of the comps that we're going to play around. And we get a second glove, which is kind of funny. We want to save these... Uh, we kind of, yeah, we, we want to save both of them, so he does actually end up spreading the gloves out, one onto the Darius, one onto the Kiana, I kind of love this. Um, ooh, just barely lose this fight, sadly. If, uh, if we had won, it certainly would have been a glove diff, but sadly we lose, but smart from Jazzalati to slam that stuff. Um, he has Morgana in shop, but he opts to not hold it here over holding, like, Soraka, Kindred, this kind of stuff. Um, we'll see what he ends up actually wanting to play around this game, but I normally like a Morgana on that board, so I'm a little surprised he didn't opt to hold it. Uh, we take the item grab bag here. This is going to be a Hodge plus a BT. This looks really, really nice. We keep the glove open for potential um, armor shred like uh, a Last Whisper. And we keep the belt open for potential Morello down the line. So I love what this does to our items. Um, yeah, the only downside to holding the Morgana there, I guess, is that uh, it's a little bit awkward right now. She doesn't really do much on our board until we get to the Kayan. Um, So the idea is that maybe it's just a bit expensive. But I don't know. I, I would pay maybe a little bit of gold or a little bit of board strength. Maybe, you know, cut the Alu and lose. Umbral or, or cut the Soraka lose our better heavenly buff just to just to keep the Morgana. The other kind of scary thing is we just fought somebody who's heavenly here. So hopefully um, this is not a comp I feel is that is that good when it's contested. I was a I was a stark hater of it during uh, the patch before this where there were like three to four heavenly players per lobby. I was like this comp should not be played that much. If there are three people playing heavenly in the lobby, there is no chance in in heck that you're gonna catch me uh, playing heavenly so i uh I, i'm a little scared in this spot uh the upside is it's probably only one way contested i actually like this comp a lot more on this patch because it usually is uh at most one way contested often zero ways contested uh we want to finish off our morello or our last whisper here ideally rod or bow bow i think is a bit more important but both are very good uh and yeah we are going to pick up the rod here it's on the thresh I wish we could play more around this Thresh. Ooh, Kha'Zix 2 is nice uh, just to have that guy. Well, it doesn't actually matter that much about having him two-starred anymore because they don't provide extra bonuses for being two-starred. But, I mean, it's still nice just have a Kha'Zix 2 rather than a Kha'Zix 1 on your board. He'll at least do something. And yeah, we're throwing all our Heavenly units into the Team Planner. Um, yeah, this is the Harry Standard Heavenly board, and he's going to throw the Diana in there as well, who can fit over some of the units. Obviously, if you hit some five costs, you'll be very, very happy. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting the Morello slammed, I, I love where our items are at. I love where our HP is at. It's, uh, it's, it's worked out very well to actually play around this open. I still think it's a fantastic opener. Um, and boom, Malphite too. All right. There's also a Silas in Chop, which you can consider kind of as a plus one. I don't, uh, I don't, like, I'm not in love with Silas. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm, I don't have anything against you if you are, but I just, yeah, I don't think he's that amazing. Uh, and I love the early level here. I, I wish we could have scattered around a bit more to see how relevant this early level is, because like this person we're fighting, there is no chance that we're ever losing this fight. But maybe, maybe, maybe would have made a, a diff in one of our fights. Who's who's to say? I mean, we don't have the information. I I, I couldn't say, certainly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 30 gold here, uh, up to 40. The nice thing is we have a streak here, because we're really not that rich in the grand scheme of things. Uh, without the streak, we'd actually be quite poor. But yeah, this guy's kind of annoying. We also have fish bones as their... Uh, as their Orn item, which is going to be really interesting. Where's Fishbone's going to go? We get our last Whisper finally, and yep, going to immediately make that. And it's a full BT, which I, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Ideally, we could keep our streak here, but I'm not that confident in our, I mean, our board's actually not bad. 
It's it's just um it's just scary if we fight someone who's like rolling here. If you fight someone who's rolling here, it's gonna be really hard to beat them. But if you fight someone with just like a generic stage three boar that they're just carrying to four one, we could actually win. Uh, I think we were fighting a Syndra. Oh no no no, okay, that was somebody else. We're actually fighting a Gargantuan Resolve Diana here, which is uh really interesting, and she just <laughs> does absolutely nothing. Yeah, that player may be cooking a little bit too hard. But yeah, we're a little bit broke here. I'm curious if Shaz Latte is gonna go for the four two or not. Oh, is this Justrana a gift of gold? Because that actually makes the 4-2 all the, the more reasonable. Because, yeah, before here, uh, it, it was a little bit awkward to actually go for the 4-2. We're a little bit uh, poor in this uh, spot. I mean, uh, balance budget could help with us being poor, but it's it's so slow, right? Um, you, you could take the, the team planning. Uh, or Is that what this augment is called? Team building? Um, there's a decent number of forecasts that you could get. Reinforcement is an augment that I think I underrate a lot because it, it doesn't look good in the stats. Um, but, you know, in a spot like this where we want to 4-2 it, and where we're contested, you could certainly see this being the take uh, just to easily get something like Elise into a cane two. He's going to tailor his board a bit to try to get Heavenly plus one. Um, and yeah, he's just going to take the um, the reinforcement here and immediately hits a cane two. That's fantastic. We were contested, but now it doesn't really matter that we are contested. Um, we can just, yeah, put these units onto our board, move these. So we kind of want to move the Kiana items over to cane. It's a little bit sad because, I mean, tempo-wise, we, we kind of have to slam these here, but I really wish we could get the LW onto him. But yeah, you just have to slam these. And I love this from Jazzalata, actually. This is so cool. On a win streak here, we just take reinforcement, grab that cane too, and why roll? Uh, obviously, we'd like to move these Kiana items over to, like, a better carry at some point, but why should we roll past finding a cane too? This is actually so, so cool. Win streak into the uh, the reinforcement that spikes our board uh, just enough, and, and this is going to be enough to make it to 9, and... And this board has a lot of five costs that you'd like to add on the board, especially when you don't have Heavenly plus one. You really want to get out of a lot of these like weaker Heavenly units and play, uh, you know, better five costs. Actually, this is a really cool um, little addition as well to the board. He hits the he hits the set and the Syndra and says, I'm going to throw Faded onto this board here. The set and the Syndra, I mean, the Syndra just activating Arcanist in the set, just being a cool guy on the board. Um, and obviously the Thresh comes in uh, that we had in for uh, Behemoth. That's a, that's a pretty cool cool addition to uh to this board I, I like that a lot and like i was saying we get out of some of those heavenly units with, with no heavenly plus one there's no need to actually play around uh seven or six heavenly because our board just we, we just don't go that high in in terms of uh of, of heavenly units uh you know like kayan isn't gonna benefit from the the high level of heavenlies so why should we play for super vertical heavenly when we could actually push levels get in stuff like a rakan get in stuff mm, i mean less so lissandra now because she's been nerfed um, but Rakan's still a fantastic addition onto this board. Wukong's a, a cool heavenly guy. Um, but yeah, like, look, he's looking at the Udyr, he's looking at the Irelia, uh, looking at uh, getting in, like, as many 5 plus as we really can fit in this board. So I love this from Jazz Latte. Oh, and he's even looking at the Lissandra as well. I mean, she's still she's still a Lissandra. So, uh, yeah, nothing, uh, you can't turn your nose up at, the, at a Lissandra. She's she's nerfed, but she's still uh, she's quite good, though. Have you guys seen the changes they're making to her next patch? Oh, my. I mean, we'll we'll talk about next patch next next patch, but uh, yeah, Riot Riot Games has had enough of this Lissandra unit, I think. Um, this guy who was that the guy we thought was contesting us? I mean, that was the Titans result Diana guy, and it looked like they had a Diana three. I'm really curious to see how that player places. I didn't get a chance to see their HP, but I I would bet that it's not a top four, but hey, we'll see. Sadly, we finally lose our streak here right at the end too. If we could have just high rolled and fought someone weak, we would have been okay. But sadly, we rotate into someone who's pretty strong here but still look at our gold we can easily 5 to it 5 1 it even 75 hp you might even just 5 to it here so you have the the max amount of gold that you can because there's a lot of stuff that we want to hit but curious to see if jazz latte decides to 5 1 it or 5 to it i think i would go 5 to it here but i, I can see the argument for either i mean you're so rich yeah he, he is just gonna 5 1 it here because he is just that rich uh, picks up another cane here, and we have a, a Hui on our board, which is a pretty neat uh, addition. Not an amazing unit. Ooh, there's a Morgana to play around. There's a Zyra Khan to play around. Immediately gets that Rakan in. I love it. And Morello is immediately going to go into the Morgana too. And I assume we're looking for... No? Okay, he's just going to go for the full TG here. I was thinking maybe like AP itemization for uh, the Morgana now, and then eventually that goes onto like a Hui later perhaps. But he just goes for the full TG onto Rakan. I mean... Fantastic TG holder can use a lot of items, and right now we are uh, we're duplicating this uh, this Irelia, which I don't know if she's even. I guess we'll see if she ends up on our board. But like I was saying, we can get out of a lot of these uh, these heavenly units at this point. Uh, continue to roll down, pick up another uh, cane here, and I mean we can absolutely go for a cane three this game. Um, the other person who was contesting us, ooh, that's another cane too. 
Uh, that can actually item hold these Kiana items. I love this. I love seeing stuff like this where you just put the triple item on both canes. Uh, we get, ooh, what is it? Uh, tier here and then crack the other anvil. And then ideally you'd want some kind of tier item. And there's not one, I, I guess, Nashers, yeah, for the, the faster cast. So you kind of wanted like an adaptive helm, a Shojin or something like that here. Um, a little bit sad that we couldn't actually get there because we really want the Morello um, proccing to be happening as, as much as possible. Uh, still rolling at zero. Pick up another cane. Oh my god, we are one off cane three here if we if we can just hit one. And a lot of people, I think... Oh, he goes for the Static Shiv. Interesting. For the for the Rakan damage. I think the Static Shiv in this comp is an item that I tend to underrate. I've seen multiple people, I feel like, go for the Static Shiv, and I always underrate it, uh, just underrating the damage that Rakan does. But yeah, Static Shiv makes sense. I mean, one more cane, and two more rounds, and we have a cane three. We do also want to roll while everyone else is alive, so all of their four costs are out of the pool. It means higher odds of us hitting. Uh, and also... Uh, we really want to just hit this before people realize that we are going for Kane. Like, what if there was one off Carousel, man? How crazy would that be? Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's scouting around here to see if there are any Kanes out. He went so quickly uh, on the 2x speed that I couldn't see. I mean, the JG Morgana is a JG Morgana. I, I, I mean, what else are we taking here? Okay, yeah, it has to be JG Morgana. Uh, I mean, doubt that we're going to hit a Morgana 3. That's another Irelia, which is nice, though. He opts to just say, at this point, uh, I need the gold. I need to pick up my Kanes. He wants to hit before he dupes. There's a Wukong. That's got to come into the board. Yeah, he's going to cut those Khan at this point. Interesting. I mean, he needs to keep the Hui in. It's, oh, it's so awkward because we need to keep the Hui in to duplicate. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we we would probably cut the Hui. I mean, once we hit a cane three, all bets are off. 34 HP, though. We need to be stable enough um, to, to make it here. He ends up buying another Zyrakhan here. Uh, oh, 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 wow. Wait, that was so sick, actually. Right at the end, he just says, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to roll. And he hits. <laughs> that was, I mean... Once again, all those other players were still in the pool right up until the end there. Um, their, their units were being taken out, so that's a bunch of four cross taken out of the pool. So it's quite likely they will hit. And man, there's the KN3, and we're just going to watch this guy cut through boards. He's got the Edge of Night, so he's never getting one tap. That's the only way you can lose with this Kane is if he gets like one shot by this like Cinder plus Azir combo. But with the Edge of Night, with the BT, that is never happening. And as long as someone else doesn't hit a three star four cost, we are just going to coast our way to a first here. Nobody's got anything on bench. Uh, yeah, it's uh, at this point, we're just filling time and we can watch uh, a beautiful Kane uh, win all of these fights. It's it's fun to watch a, a three star four cost chew through boards, right? He's even rolling down to try to find some upgrades to try to make his board better i don't know this yeah this jazz latte guys he's just doing it for fun i mean boom wukong 2 on level 9 why not certainly uh seems fine to me and gets the udir on the board like i was talking about who really cares about heavenly i mean at this point it's kind of moot but uh who really cares about playing around vertical heavenly when you could just play better units kane's not benefiting that much from heavenly and i mean he, he can benefit he, we could have no synergies for this kane and he would he would be popping off man this guy just does so much damage but this is a cool game playing a more uncontested line, I would say. Like this is a this is a comp that obviously was super popular last patch, but I feel like it's fallen out of favor. And I love doing this kind of stuff in in TFT. When a when a comp like this falls out of favor, when there are less people playing around it, I feel like I personally that's that's my play style. I love playing this kind of stuff when a comp like this falls out of favor. When when less people are playing heavenly, I love to play heavenly because the comp's still perfectly playable. You saw we stabilized very very well around that cane too with all the heavenly units, and I mean we just played a good early game use the power of the um of the way to duplicate uh our uh our guy and uh i mean what the, the rest is history it's this game's gonna be over at 6 3 it's so early i'm only 18 minutes into the recording where we're gonna be done at 19 minutes what a beast that this jazz latte player is but you know just goes to show why he's such a beast i mean this is this is a classic game of tft strong early game into strong mid game into three star four cost into gg so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Twitch channel, I'll have the links down below. Thanks for watching.